Hey, what's up? Today we're going to talk about Georgia Tech's AI for Robotics class as part of their online master's program. Now I took the class and I'm here to tell you all about it and hopefully give you some tips and tricks that save you some headaches. So let's get started. All right, let's talk about Georgia Tech's AI for Robotics class. So the short answer to this is it's a medium level class with about 12 hours of homework a week. And the best thing is you get to do some really cool projects. So what is AI for Robotics? So it's basically four things. First is localization, figuring out where you are in the world. Second is mapping, so figuring out where all the objects are in the world. Search, uh, finding the objects in the world, and then control getting to those objects or the goal that you want to get to. For the graded course material, there are four projects, a mini project, six problem sets, which are just short coding assignments, uh, two exams, and then a lot of extra credit offered. So for the projects, so the first project you'll do is called Kalman Filter, and it's basically trying to find the locations of a bunch of meteorites and then make a little laser turret that destroys those meteorites. So the way you'll do this is through linear algebra, NumPy, and trigonometry. The nice thing about this project is that it follows the lecture videos very closely, which are available online and are free. So you can start watching those if you're interested. And the programming to start out is also available through this course. It ref The lecture videos reference this course a lot, so I would suggest if you want to tinker around with the code, you can check it out. Alright, so next project is Particle Filter. So in Particle Filter, you're also finding objects in a scene but in this way you crowdsource by sending out a bunch of best guesses and then trimming down to the absolute best guesses so you can see this little black storm are the points that I think are most likely to map to the little glider you will be using linear algebra statistics for likelihood calculations trigonometry and your own creativity so creativity because you're gonna have to come up with a few things on your own they don't exactly tell you exactly how to do this in the lecture videos but I definitely suggest like figuring out beforehand what your strategy is and then trying to code it. I uh, only got like 63 on this project, yeah, because I started too late. And so my suggestion is, you know, start early. <laughs> All right, the third project here is search. So you're a little robot and you're trying to find these boxes in the world and bring them back to the goal. It's a pretty cool assignment. You get to watch your robot at work. Uh, you're just going to be using like XY coordinates planning. That's like a robotics term specifically, and it means when you make a decision, you're trying to plan how that decision will affect the next ones and make the best plan given some kind of criteria. And then for loops are just your friend in this assignment. They'll go over the lecture videos, like how you want to program this. Um, so it's not too bad. I would just say, like, take some time. And then the fourth project is SLAM, which stands for Simultaneous Location and Mapping. So basically that means like at the same time of figuring out where you are in the world, you'll also be mapping where every other object is in the world. So in the project, you're this little drone and you're trying to find the treasure with this uh, little red triangle while avoiding the trees. I would suggest making a paper copy of your linear algebra steps first and figuring out that because once you do that, you just code it up once and you're basically done with the slam portion. All right, next and last little project. It's a mini project, so not as intensive as the other ones. But you're basically like a drone and you're trying to get from point A to point B by changing the thrust and the roll angle of your little drone. So this one's cool. You get some extra credit opportunity. I myself, I got .22 extra points on this one. All right, so problem sets. These are just short coding assignments that you literally can just copy paste from the lecture videos and just submit to Gradescope for automatic grading. Um, definitely easy and just wanting to get you in the mood of like starting your projects. That's why these uh, problem sets exist, basically. And exams. So there are two exams. The first one is your midterm at 5%, and the last one's the final, 10% of your grade. Uh, it's only 15 questions for the midterm and 30 for the final, which is nice, so they're not really long. And you get two tries for each exam, so that's great. They, get, they keep your best score. I would suggest setting up for these because if you think about it, 15% is a little bit more than one project's worth of points. But if you just get, for example, like one more question right on the midterm, that's like 
a lot more than four hours worth on the project. And then extra credit, yeah, this class gives you a lot of opportunities for extra credit. Basically, like every other week, there's this hardware or research challenge participation thing you can do. Or if you help out lots of students on Piazza, you can get extra credit. And then some of the projects offer extra credit. And yeah, here's the breakdown of my final grade. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. I'll be making some more soon of other Georgia Tech classes that I've taken. And I've made a few others already, so check those out if you're interested. I'll see you in the next one.